week's parasha, we find Yaakov Avinu coming to Yitzchak to get the brachas. Not a pleasant thing for him to do because he had to deceive his father. And the essence of Yaakov Avinu was emes. Titen emes liyakov chesed liavraham. Just as chesed was the essence of Avram Avinu, emes was the essence of Yaakov Avinu. And as we said a couple of weeks ago, the definition of Nisoyen, of a test, depends on the character of the person. For Avram Avinu, Nisoyen was to go against his midah of chesed, if that's what HaKadosh Baruch Hu wanted. For Yaakov Avinu, it was to go against his midah, his essence of truth. So, he had to fool his father. Not a pleasant thing for him to do. He had to spend 20 years with Laban. Not an easy person to deal with. He was the epitome of Sheker. So Yaakov Avinu comes now to Yitzchak, and he speaks to him. And Yitzchak says, Hakoil, koil Yaakov. The voice is the voice of Yaakov. V'hayadayin yidei Esav. But the arms, the hands, are those of Esav, because, because Yaakov Avinu covered his arms with a, furry, with a piece of fur. Simply said, yeah, it sounded like Yaakov, but it felt like Esav. There's a deeper meaning to this. Klal Yisrael in Mitzrayim. The Torah says, Vayishma Hashem is tzakosam. HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Vayishma Hashem is koileinu. HaKadosh Baruch Hu heard our voice. And Rashi says, our voice, HaKol Kol Yaakov. The voice is the voice of Tefillah. That's what represents, that, that's what epitomizes Yaakov Avinu. HaKol Kol Yaakov. That's what HaKadosh Baruch Hu heard. And, in the wilderness, in the Midbar, Klal Yisrael wanted to pass through the land of Adam, and they said, we'll do business with you, we'll buy water from you, we'll buy food from you, you'll make money on us. And the king of Adam says, no, I don't have anything to do with you. And there Rashi says, the king of, uh, king of Adam says, I'm a descendant of Esau. And he says, I'll come, out, I'll come against you with the sword. I'll bring my army to attack you if you dare to come into my country. How you die in the day, Esau. In other words, what Yitzchak said was not just an observation of, of the young man who was standing in front of him. It was a prediction for the future. Yaakov's future depends on koil. His koil, the sound, the sound of his Torah, the sound of his tefillah, that's us. That's us. That's what we are. Of course, you need police and you need an army and you have to defend yourself. True. But it has to come with a realization that we'll win battles. We'll win battles. But when we win a battle, it's because our Kol Kol Yaakov, because our Kodesh Baruch Hu is listening to our tefillah. And how you dying with the of? Do we need any proof of that? Look around the world. Look at all the powers that have tried to annihilate us, whether they're flesh and blood descendants of Esau or whether they live by the credo of Esau. Al har b'chatichya, hayadai miday Esau. During the uh, during the War of Independence, 1948, Ben Gurion met the Rosh Hashiva of Hebron, Reb Chaskel Sarna Zechron Livrocha. And you know, in those days, the Jewish population was not great. And the leaders knew each other, secularists and B'nai Torah and Rebbeim, they knew each other. They were on first name basis. And Ben-Gurion said to the Rosh Hashiva of Hebron, Reb Chaskel, he said, Reb Chaskel, my boys, my boys are at war. My boys are sacrificing, giving up their lives. What are your boys doing? And Reb Chaskel said, my boys are in the base Medrash. My boys are in the base Medrash, and that's why your boys will win the war. That's Klal Yisrael. Akol Kol Yaakov.